In the previous movie, you might have noticed that when I set up my tween animations in Director by changing the properties of two keyframes, that I had this path that appeared when I clicked on the sprite on the stage. These sprite paths are the lines that Director displays on the stage to show the movement of a sprite. You can see that these are always set up when I create a tween animation. If I unhide one of these other channels and I click on the sprite and I move the path of that sprite. Actually, I needed to click on this one here because that notice that that sprite span only has one keyframe. So I cannot set up a tween animation there. So let's hide channel number two and open up channel number three. And now if I move my sprite, you have that little path there. Notice that I can open that up and that will display the actual movement or path movement of that sprite span. Now sprite paths are controlled by the sprite overlay settings dialog box. You can change the settings to make the paths appear for all sprites, for selected sprites, or only when the pointer rolls over a sprite. You do that by selecting View, Sprite Overlay, Settings. Notice that I have Show Info and Show Paths. I can also just turn off the paths completely. Notice that now you don't see them. Let's go back to channel number one. I think that's the best example of these sprite paths. Notice that now it's invisible. You can always go back to the sprite overlay and show the paths. There's my path. And you can also modify the settings here by choosing settings. And I can display the paths when I roll over the sprite, when I select the sprite or all the sprites all the time. Let me demonstrate how to display the rollover. Notice that when I roll over the sprite, it appears, the path appears. Sometimes it's, if you have a lot of sprites on the stage showing them all the time can be distracting, so sometimes you just want to see the path when you roll over the sprite. Let's go ahead and for this demonstration now, leave my paths for any sprite that's selected. Now in addition to showing you the path of the animation, what's nice about these sprite paths is that you can tween a sprite directly on the stage by editing the sprite's path. The keyframes here are represented by filled circles. The first keyframe is green, second keyframe is red, so I can modify the starting and ending points of this path by modifying the actual keyframes right there on the stage. This is a very visual way of seeing how the animation will appear when the movie is played back. Now where this really comes into use is you can also insert keyframes, additional keyframes, in any additional frames where you want the sprite's animation path to change. For example, right here I have a linear path, but if I want to make that less linear, I can go to frame 10 and insert another keyframe and notice that I get another colored circle here. And now I can modify the path so that it's not a straight line. And I can add as many keyframes as I desire and each one will have a colored circle on my path making it very easy to modify the path. Notice that my intermediary keyframes are now yellow but my first keyframe is always green, my last keyframe is always red and using these paths you could very quickly generate sophisticated movement paths for your sprites. Let me go ahead and take my opacity of that last keyframe and increase it back to 100 so we can see that path a bit better. Now to change the degree of curvature between keyframes, you can use your modify sprite tweening dialog here. Curvature can be normal very linear or very extreme curvature. Let's turn it all the way up to extreme and then notice that the path here is much more curvy 
versus if I choose modify sprite tweening and do a very linear curvature, click OK. Notice that now I have straight lines between each keyframe. So you have quite a bit of control over these path tweens, which are probably the most common that you'll use in Director, and that's why you have a very sophisticated sprite tweening dialog box here for setting the degree of curvature. The setting here, continuous at endpoints, makes the sprite move in the same direction at the beginning and the end. This creates a circular motion. A little bit unusual there. Probably a better way to demonstrate that is to move this endpoint here. of interesting effect there. Notice that it's moving in the same direction. Let's go ahead and make that last sprite there, that last keyframe a little bit bigger so that we can actually see this better. But if I go ahead and press the enter key to play this, You can see that it goes in a circular motion. And again, that's because I chose the modify sprite tweening setting here. I need to select a sprite first, modify sprite tweening. The continuous at endpoints will create a circular motion there. Now you may have noticed that the speed of my sprite animation stayed the same, but you can modify that by choosing the ease in and ease out settings and changing it here. So let me now move on to the next movie and demonstrate how to accelerate and decelerate your sprite animations using the ease in and ease out settings here in the sprite tweening dialog.